Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anupam here and today we shall discuss the different vaccines that is available in the market to immunize against COVID-19 virus. Right. So let us discuss. The first in our discussion will be the Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna vaccines. These are the company names and the vaccine is prepared in a similar way. So how the vaccine is prepared? So they took the virus, the coronavirus. The coronavirus has spike proteins, right? These are the virulence proteins. So what they did is they took the mRNA that is responsible for producing the spike protein. This is the mRNA. And then that mRNA they coat it with lipid bilayer. This otherwise the whole particle is called lipid nanoparticle, right? Now we have to remember one thing because they have taken the mRNA that is responsible for producing the spike protein only. So this when introduced in the human system will not produce a complete virus particle because the protein that is required for producing a virus particle is not there. It is only the mRNA responsible for the spike protein is there, right? Now the second group is the AstraZeneca Oxford or in India it is called Covishield vaccine. What they did actually is this is the COVID virus, they have spike protein and from this they have taken the mRNA. So once the mRNA is there, from this they have produced the double stranded DNA, right? So this is the DSDNA. Now this DSDNA, they incorporated it inside a adenovirus. Right. So this is called the chimpanzee adenovirus. And the name is child of two all right so the difference is here it is the mrna and now the mrna is converted to dsdna by reverse transcriptase and then that is incorporated into a simpanji adenovirus why simpanji because if you use a adenovirus of human origin most likely all the human being or most of them would have been infected in the lifetime with the human adenovirus. So as soon as it enters the body, the body's immune system will deactivate it. So we use a chimpanzee adenovirus so that it may not recognize it, the human body, and there will be immune response, right? So there's the reason why you use chimpanzee adenovirus. And the M protein is the same, that code for the, this is the spike protein. spike protein so the AstraZeneca Oxford or Covishield will also be known as vector driven vector driven vaccine so this is the vector this is the adenovirus and this adenovirus acts as a vector to transfer the genetic material of the virus into the human system now coming to the third, that is the Sputnik vaccine that is produced in the USA. Now it is also a vector driven vaccine. This is also a vector driven vaccine, right? Now here, what they've done, they've actually used two vectors, two adenoviruses, right? So they have used adenoviruses that are two in number. So number one is called AD26, two is called AD5 and this is used in first dose 
this is in second dose the mechanism is, is same so they incorporated a double stranded dna inside the adenovirus right and and then it is transformed to the human system to produce a immune response right so this is also vector driven vaccine and dna vaccine right And this is the adenovirus. Now, last but not the least is the Covaxin. So, Covaxin, what they did is actually they took a large stock of coronavirus. And what they did is they treated it with beta propionyl lactone so this becomes inactivated what do you mean by inactivated inactivated means they can invade but cannot replicate right so these are called the coronavirus inactivated coronavirus or killed coronavirus right so this is the killed vaccine so in this way these four group of vaccines are produced you must remember this these adenoviruses these are genetically modified what do you mean by that that means they cannot multiply So they cannot produce the disease inside the body, right? So now we'll discuss how after coming from this inside the human system, they act or they work, right? So once the vaccines are produced in different format, they are introduced into the human system mostly by giving intramuscular injection. And as soon as the vaccine, the molecule reaches the human system, they invade cells right so this is an example of an enucleated cell so in whichever way we have produced the vaccine the final target will be production of the spike protein because by using replication, transcription, translation inside the cellular machinery, there will be production of spike proteins, right? And these are nucleated cells. So as soon as the spike proteins are produced, these cells, they contain something called as MHC1. That's called major histocompatibility complex type 1. So this is MSC1, right? Now once the MSC1 is there, it then presents this spike protein. This is one kind of antigen presenting cells. So it presents the spike protein and attracts some cells of the immune system which is called the cytotoxic T cells, right? So these are called the cytotoxic T cells and they interact with the MHC1 by two parts one is called TCR another is called a CD8 once it is done then what happens is it becomes activated it's called activated cytotoxic T cells right so once activated what they will do they will lice or kill this infected cell so once the activated cytotoxic t cells they lice the cell or kill the cell what will happen is fragmented viral particle with the spike protein or the variants 
if it is killed vaccine will be secreted into the system so as soon as these are secreted from here or it is present in the blood from the vaccine itself what will happen is now this will be presented to what you call it antigen presenting cells or apc so we have basically four types of apc what are the four types number one and is the most important that is the dendritic cells number two will be macrophages then b cells we have reticular cells so these particles now will be taken up by the antigen presenting cells right so let's say for example this is the antigen presenting cell so now these particles will be there in the antigen presenting cells or the virus particle can be there also right so when it is there what will happen is this kind of cells the antigen presenting cells they contain another protein called mhc2 major histocompatibility complex type 2 right this is called mhc2 now once the mhc2 is there it will present these antigens to a specific kind of cells in the immune system that is called the helper T cells it's called the helper T cells right or TH and and they will also interact in similar fashion through the receptor TCR or CD4 molecule right so once it is done now what will happen is they will produce some mediators like IL-2, IL-4, IL-5 and what this will do in terms two things they will simultaneously activate the helper T cell more helper T cells to, will be activated at the same time they will activate the B cells right and the B cell will proliferate proliferation of B cells right so when the B cells proliferate they will transform into plasma cells And these plasma cells in turn produce the antibodies. These are the antibodies, right? At the same time, these helper T cell will also produce a kind of cell that is called the memory T cells, right? So here is an interesting thing. As you know, the B cells is also an antigen presenting cells so this antigen can directly interact with the B cell right and so this particle can directly interact with the B cell and can produce proliferation of B cells and from there on to produce antibodies right that these are called so this is called antibody mediated immunity and this is called this one and here these are called cell mediated immunity because the two cells are involved basically the cytotoxic T cells and helper T cells right now very shortly we'll discuss what is the difference between a DNA vaccine and RNA vaccine, right? So 
the DNA vaccines are not fragile. Why? Because they are carried with a vector. In this case, it is an adenovirus. And adenovirus has a coating, strong coating. So DNA virus is not fragile, it is actually very stable. That's the reason why it does not require strict cold chain maintenance, right? But the problem is, because it's a DNA, it can integrate with human genome, right? However, studies have found out that it is not the case, but there is a risk. What about the adenovirus? It is very fragile because it is carried only with a lipid nanoparticle. There is no vector and lipid nanoparticle is very fragile. So it is unstable. That means it has to be maintained in a cold chain very strictly right and it cannot integrate because it is a RNA vaccine it cannot integrate with human genome in that way it is safe however both are safe according to different studies right so in our today's discussion we have discussed we have four different kinds of vaccines available in the market and how they are produced. Once they are produced and they are inoculated into the human system, what happens after that? They activate the cell mediated immunity via cytotoxic T cells and helper T cells. The helper T cell in terms activate the B cells to produce antibodies via plasma cells. At the same time, the antigen can directly stimulate the B cells to produce plasma cells and antibodies. And also, the helper T cells produce memory T cells. So the next time the virus infects the human being, these preformed antibodies will neutralize it along with cytotoxic T cells which can kill the infected cells and memory T cells which can stimulate formation of mediators that can stimulate formation of B cells and antibodies, right? Then we'll discuss what the difference between DNA vaccines and RNA vaccines. So my request to all of you, please vaccinate yourself as soon as possible when the government says so with any of these vaccine that is available in the market to help us win over this pandemic. This is Dr. Anupam signing out. Until we meet again. Thank you.